Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide taken from a case of fibrinous pericarditis. And here we are looking at several pieces or strips of parietal pericardium. So there is a piece here, a piece here, one here, and then two more here and here. Just a quick recap of the histology. Usually there will be a single layer of mesothelial cells lining this serosal surface, but this is not well demonstrated in this particular specimen. We also have a fibrous layer. This parietal pericardium is also known as the fibrous pericardium. So there is a layer of fibroconnective tissue with some blood vessels and also some adipose tissue. What we can see is that there are some of these reddish membrane-like exudates over the surface. And over here, it's also seen in this piece. Let's take a closer look. So this dark pinkish strand-like material is fibrin. And we can see that it overlies the serosal surface of the pericardium. And this is due to inflammation where the fibrinogen actually escapes from blood vessels and then eventually forms fibrin as part of an inflammatory process. Sometimes there may be accompanying inflammatory cells. In this instance, we actually see the beginning of some degree of organization where there are these plump spindle to stellate fibroblasts that are starting to organize the fibrin. Eventually, over time, organization will lead to fibrosis, and this can cause constrictive pericarditis. Fibrinous pericarditis is usually non-infective in nature, and this is due to inflammation sometimes associated with autoimmune diseases such as SLE, and this can also be seen in association with rheumatic heart disease, post-myocardial infarction such as in Dressler syndrome, and in patients with renal failure where there can be uremic pericarditis. So in summary, this is a virtual microscopy slide showing the parietal pericardium with the fibrous and adipose tissue layers, and there is a surface fibrinous exudate, and the diagnosis is fibrinous pericarditis. Thank you.